right. Click your house and lose a mouse. That's a, it's a phrase coined by people that are against online gambling. So what happened was, a few years ago, there was, there was an import securities bill that after it was signed by the president, was sent back to Congress for reevaluation. In the security bill, it was slipped in a line that says that the, prohibit, the prohibition of the transfer of funds from a financial institution to an internet gambling site, with the exception of fantasy sports, online lottery, and horse racing, is illegal. Now, this was not read by Congress in its second read through. It was just signed. This is just was hidden away and should not be there. This is what we call the Unlawful Internet Gaming Enforcement Act, or the UIGEA. My, my claim is that this UIGEA is unnecessary. To begin, we'll go through the definition again. It prohibits the transfer of funds from a financial institution to an internet gambling site, with the exception of fantasy sports, online lotteries, and horse racing. Nowhere in there does it say internet gambling is illegal, which was the primary objective of it. All it's doing is limiting your ability to put funds in and out of online accounts that are designed for, for gambling, such as poker websites, horse racing websites. But this is very ambiguous. What constitutes is online gambling? And how do we enforce this act? So December 12, 2007, Bank of America issued a press, press release that says, the U.S. should provide a list of entities with whom banks are forbidden to take or make payments in the absence of an unambiguous definition of what is legal. Without a clear definition, financial institutions will be forced to block legitimate transactions in order to avoid the possibility of permitting an illegal transaction. So Bank of America is basically saying, we need a list of things that we can and cannot transfer funds to. So in, this, in the UIGEA, nothing was given. Luis Roseman, the director of the Division of Reserve Bank Operations of Payment Systems, goes on to say, the payment system isn't well designed for this task, and that's what we're really struggling with. So to begin that, the banks don't know who to, what they are allowed to give money to, and they, it should not be their responsibility to dig through all sorts of transactions to figure out what they can and cannot allow. All right, what is legal? Louis Roseman says, the most prominent concern is the lack of clarity of what forms of gambling are unlawful. Horse racing, online lotteries, and fantasy sports leagues are illegal under the UIGEA. Now what does this mean? Do any of these, do these have correlations to each other in reality? Are they connected? Not really. But other things such as online blackjack, online poker, these are deemed illegal based on this lack of clarity. Barney Frank, the chair of the House for Financial Service Committee, says the existing legislation is an inappropriate interference of the personal freedom of Americans, and this interference should be undone. Now, it was the Supreme Court ruled years and years ago that acts of moral obligations are left to the states to decide if they're legal, legal or illegal. This is why things like gambling is legal in Nevada, but in other states, such as Connecticut, it is illegal. Now, with that, the federal government is stepping in and deciding what the morals of the people should be. Now, this should not be allowed based upon Supreme Court. Next, who is to enforce them? Has the federal government said anyone is specifically is designed to enforce? No. Now, Leigh Williams, for the Financial Services Roundtable, says, our member, financial, our member financial institutions are very concerned that even with the final adoption of our recommendations, the rule could impose significant compliance burdens on financial institutions by increasing their role in policing legal activities. So right here it's saying that the federal government does not have anyone to enforce it, so it's designed for the banks to enforce. This is adding extra res restraint on the banks. They're being forced to be the law, they're being forced to be police officers in this. Now, the, the original cause is to stop gambling online. 
Now, there's been statements that say online gambling increases addiction. Now, in 2007, the British Gambling Prevalence Survey found that approximately 0.6% of the adult population had a problem with gambling. These could be uh, actual addiction or just pragmatic gambling. This percentage is the same as in 1999 when online gambling was not a big thing. Online gambling did not take a, took huge leaps and bounds in the year 2003 because of the World Series of Poker was won by a person that put money online. This has increased the amount of players online exponentially. Now, without this gambling increase addiction, what is the need for this act? This act is completely unnecessary. It hurts people's ability to choose what their, their morals are, and it is just a strain on banks. In conclusion, the UIGA, or Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act, is an unnecessary act designed by Congress that is inefficient in what it does. Thank you.